Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at something called ventilation perfusion coupling, or ventilation perfusion matching, or ventilation perfusion ratio. So, we've got ventilation here denoted by the V, V for ventilation, and it's referring to the amount of gas or air that moves into and out of an alveolus. So what I've drawn up here is an alveolus. Remember, Dan in the lungs. The alveolus, and ventilation refers to the amount of gas that moves into and out of the alveolus that can participate in gas exchange. I'll say it again. Ventilation is the amount of gas that can move into and out of the alveolus that can participate in gas exchange. Perfusion, obviously denoted by a Q. Now, why is it a Q? Q is beginning the beginning of the word, the French word for quantity. Because perfusion is referring to the amount of blood that moves past the alveolus the amount of blood that moves past the alveolus that can participate in gas exchange. So it's all about gas exchange. Gas exchange at the alveolus, ventilation. Gas exchange at the pulmonary arteriole, the blood vessel moving past the alveolus, perfusion. Now, it's called ventilation perfusion coupling or matching or ratio because we want that VQ ratio to be as close to one to one as possible. What is this referring to? It's referring to this. This is the analogy I like to use for my students. Imagine you have a football game that's just finished. You have 100,000 people leaving the football stadium that all want to go home. Now, you need the right amount of buses to take these people home. You don't want not enough buses because there's going to be people left over, and you don't want too many buses because you're going to be wasting buses. That's the analogy here. The people are the gas going into the alveolus, and the buses are the blood cells going past. So if ventilation drops, you want perfusion to drop. So if there's less people coming out of the stadium, you bring less buses. If ventilation increases, more people leave the stadium, you bring more buses. So that's why it's called matching. If V goes up, Q goes up. If V goes down, Q goes down. Now let me demonstrate to you clinically how this works. So let's say now, that we've got some sort of blockage in the alveolus. There's a blockage in the alveolus. Think about this. You've got the ventilation, the air coming in and out of the alveolus. It's not happening, right? Because there's no ventilation occurring. So what happens to the gas that's inside of this alveolus? Well, think about it. The blood is still moving past. And so that means whatever oxygen is inside the alveolus will jump into the bloodstream. And that means oxygen levels will drop because it's not getting replenished. What about carbon dioxide levels? Well, the blood's still moving past, so it can throw carbon dioxide out into the alveolus. And because it can't escape, carbon dioxide levels go up. So what was the, what was the very first thing that happened here, right? The very first thing was that there was a blockage at the alveolus, which led to a decrease in ventilation, right? There's less ventilation happening. That decrease in ventilation led to a decrease in oxygen in the alveolus and an increase in carbon dioxide at the alveolus. Here's the really cool thing. The decrease in oxygen in the alveolus is the trigger to tell this pulmonary arteriole to constrict. Decreased oxygen results in vasoconstriction. Now, what does that mean for perfusion coming past? If that's now constricting, what does that mean for perfusion coming past? It drops. We have matching. Ventilation dropped, perfusion dropped. Let's now look at an example where there's not a blockage in the alveolus, there's a blockage at the blood vessel itself. So let's take a look. So we've got a blockage here. So let's think about what's happening. Is the blood moving past? No. So what happens to perfusion? You have a drop in perfusion. What's happening at the alveolus? Well, what's happening at the alveolus is that gas is coming in to the alveolus. Think about what's happening here, right? Gas is coming in. There's no blood going past. So we can't exchange anything. So gas is going in, gas is going out. So that means whatever the concentration of gas is in the atmosphere ends up being that concentration inside the alveolus. Now if you think about it, 
what you should probably be aware of is that inside the alveolus normally, the oxygen concentration inside the alveolus is about 100 millimetres of mercury. And the oxygen concentration outside the alveolus in the atmosphere is about 159 millimetres of mercury. That means, that just in a normal alveolus, I'm not talking about a blocked alveolus, 159, 100. Oxygen is lost. The pressure of oxygen, partial pressure, is lost when it goes into the alveolus for some reason, normally. Why? Because some of that oxygen binds with hydrogen to create water. So there's some that's lost. And this is a normal uh, blood vessel moving through. So oxygen gets taken away pretty quickly. So that's why in a normal alveolus, the oxygen levels are usually low. What about carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is quite low, 0.2 millimeters of mercury. What is it in the alveolus? In the alveolus, the carbon dioxide levels are 40. They're a lot higher. Why is that? Well, because in a normal, normal alveolus, the blood that's going past can throw carbon dioxide out, boosting up the levels of carbon dioxide. So now that I've shown you what it's like normally, what's happening now that this is blocked? If this is blocked, no blood's going past, this, I told you, the concentration or partial pressure of these gases here now starts to reflect the partial pressure of gas outside. So what does that mean for oxygen? It means that the oxygen goes from 100 to 159. So oxygen goes up. What happens to carbon dioxide? It goes from 40 to 0 0.2. That means carbon dioxide levels go down. Well, compare that to here. It's the opposite, right? It's the opposite. So here's the interesting point. In this case, the drop in CO2 is actually the trigger to tell the bronchioles to constrict. What was the stimulus? A drop in perfusion. That led to a drop in carbon dioxide, which led to bronchial constriction, which means, what's the outcome? A drop in ventilation. It now matches. You get the drop in perfusion resulting in a drop in ventilation. So at the end of the day, how do you summarize all this? This is how I'll do it. You would say that decreased alveolar oxygen, or you could put the P in front, the partial pressure, decreased alveolar partial pressure oxygen equals pulmonary arterial vasoconstriction. You could also say that decreased alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide equals bronchial constriction. And this is basically summarizing what's happening in that ventilation perfusion coupling process.